I'd like to go, but, you know, it, it's kind of weird because, like, I don't know what offense they run or whatever. Hey, why don't you guys go ahead? I'll catch up in just a minute. Okay. All right. I used to believe that life was all about destinations. I set a goal once to graduate from college. I worked hard, studied hard, and I graduated. After graduation, I remember speaking with my father about how empty I felt that day. There wasn't the great emotion, the great joy that I thought was gonna come with reaching my goal. And he said, son, the joy is in the journey. And the greatest journey that I am on and will ever take is the journey I take with my family. I love to be with my family. I like every single day. I do look forward to fishing. I look forward to graduations, I look forward to baseball games, but I enjoy every single day. We've made a lot of mistakes. We've had some bumps and bruises, but in the end, I think it's given me a little bit of insight into how perfect our Heavenly Father's plan really is. I don't profess to know everything, but I do think that we've learned some things that may help you. If you'd like to come along, we would love to share some of those lessons that we have learned along the way. When, um, when my daughter started making decisions that were not in her best interest and not the best for her, um, and also, you know, I was looking at that thinking, what what have I done? What did I do? Because I, I taught her to work. I gave her responsibilities as a child and as she was growing up in my home. And I worked um, very hard. And my husband worked. We were, we were very frugal. We tried really hard to, to instill in them by showing them by example, because I felt like I've been taught that you teach by example. You were broken hearted. Yeah. I was, I was distraught. I couldn't figure out why she would be doing things totally different than what I had raised her. And I realized then that I had shown her what to do, but I didn't engage her in what to do and how to live her life. And so we've tried to do things differently. And we were grateful that we have a second chance with the younger children to readjust and, and do things in a better way. Well, and the children, if we tell them, they forget. If we show them, they understand. But when we engage them, they, they become. become. How are you today? Oh, not so good. My car just stopped. What happened? It just kind of puttered to a stop and we have engaged our children we've tried to engage them by letting them experience firsthand how how it feels inside when you serve others when you when you help lift another another person that maybe can't they can't ever repay you well helping somebody that can't repay you i think that's that's really good for not only them but for your self esteem it makes you feel really good inside knowing, yeah, I did something good today. Our idea and our values that we're trying to pass down to our children is that they can make a difference in, in the world and that they, they're significant. Every act that they do does affect other people around them. And as long as they're doing a positive thing and going in a positive direction, then they will be happier and the people around them will be blessed from their actions. You know, we have an opportunity to be humanitarians every day in our life. It doesn't take a lot of money. You don't have to go to exotic places, and we've, we've been to a lot of fun places, and it is fun to go, but humanitarian work begins at home. Have the rest of a Thank great you. day. Thank you so much. Yep. I really appreciate all of your help. The definition of a humanitarian is someone who wants to lift someone else up and assist them. And we can do that every day in our homes and in our schools.
As a family, usually we like to go places to help people. When me and my family work together, we have all of us out there, and it just kind of helps to teach us what we're supposed to do and not just watch, we actually participate. I'll get down and dirty if I have to. I love to get with people and I think it's I think it's great that my parents are giving me this experience. I can give my kids money, I can give my kids cars, I can give my kids real estate. But I cannot give my kids a desire to be honest, a good work ethic, the ability and the desire to serve. And so if you look at our Heavenly Father's plan, he desires to give each of his children all that he has. But to qualify for those blessings, we have to become what he has become. Now, I don't pretend to be like my Heavenly Father, but for my children, for them to inherit my estate, they will need to become what I am trying to become. You know, it's funny, sometimes we think that our kids learn by osmosis. We think that because they're in the same room with us or under the same roof, that they're gonna think like we think and believe like we believe. And then our kids do something totally contrary to what we believe and we find out that we are sadly mistaken. You know, it's interesting, you think about success for your children, you think about piano lessons and football and, and college education, good, good grades, and you know, when it all comes down to it, I think about the success of my kids and if I run into somebody 30 years from today and they say to me, how are your kids doing? If my son has a temple recommend and is worthy Melchizedek priesthood holder, I will say my son is doing fantastic. If on the other hand, my children are wealthy beyond measure and famous, but they're not worthy of a temple recommend, I will say my children are struggling. We had some friends that had sold part of their business and came into a quite a large sum of money quickly. And they bought you know, some nice cars and an airplane and things. And they kind of got caught up in this image and the worldliness. And um, just a few short years, within two years, their world has crumbled. And they've been divorced, and it's, it's a whole different picture. We don't judge other people, but I just worry that if that happened to my children, I would hate for that same thing to happen to them. Money can be a great benefit to the world, but it can also destroy eternal salvation. One point in our life, two of our children were making some mistakes and they were a little bit contrary to what we believe as a family. And I thought, wow, what happens if somebody receives a pile of money who's not living gospel principles? And I don't know about you, but I've never heard anybody say, Wow, I inherited a bunch of money, and so I decided to go back to church and turn my life around. I used to worry if I died today, what would happen to my kids? And how would money or prosperity affect their, their choices and their, their ambitions and their life's goals? And that caused me a lot of stress. In fact, at one point, I was ready to sign over everything I had to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints rather than risk having them have to make choices that would be difficult for them with a, with a large sum of money. And uh, uh, some friends who work with a lot of donors in the church mentioned, well, what are your goals as a family? And I said, my goal is to raise worthy Melchizedek priesthood holders. And this kind gentleman, Ron Black, said, what if you can do both? You can teach your son's correct principles. My eyes immediately opened and I said, I'm very interested. And so we started a charitable foundation. My sons and my daughter are the board of directors. We will have a discussion about things we should donate to and ideas, and they actually choose the things that we donate to. 
The one aspect we've added recently is sometimes it's easy to give other people's money away. And I told my sons, Jade and Gabe, that to be real philanthropists, you must sacrifice your own money. And that night, they decided they would donate a portion of their money in addition to the money that was coming from the foundation. And that way, it gives the opportunity for them to learn correct principles, to grow and develop, and if they are worthy of their priesthood, they can then handle the inheritance and continue to do good. If they exercise their agency contrary to my beliefs, then the option is that that entire inheritance can still go to the church. What I want most for my family is for them to be happy. I want them to be kind to each other and to all those around them. I want them to look out for others' needs and be helpful. When I grow up, I want to be like my dad because he's just a really great guy. And I think that um, the Lord has blessed him with the ability to find people who are in need. Most of the stuff that we do as humanitarians is to help other people. It's really not what you give, it's what you do to help people. My dad's already put a, me and my brother on that path, but I certainly hope that when I grow up, I will be successful because of the stuff that he's teaching me now. Everything we do, our charitable foundation, our service work is hopefully to help teach my sons how to become better human beings and to become more like their Heavenly Father so that as they continue to progress on this journey, their ultimate goal is to return home safe to their Heavenly Father. before and I'll say it again this life is not a destination this life is a journey and that journey is the process of becoming like our Heavenly Father to possess those traits those values and those characteristics that make him what he is and I believe we have a responsibility to pass along those values and do the best we can to pass them along to our children because they were his children long before they were ours I know my family is not perfect we have a long ways to go on our journey but I feel confident that we're on the right path. <laughs>